Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into something that literally surrounds us, plastic. And not just any plastic, but polyethylene. From grocery bags to water bottles, it's everywhere. But where did it actually come from? Who invented it and how did polyethylene revolutionize plastics? Well, grab a snack or maybe unwrap it from some plastic and let's jump in, right here, on History of Simple Things. Before we get into the juicy backstory, let's quickly break down what polyethylene actually is. In the most basic terms, polyethylene is a type of plastic made from the polymerization of ethylene gas. That just means a bunch of ethylene molecules, those are little hydrocarbons, get strung together like beads on a necklace. The result is this lightweight, durable, and super flexible material. It's the most widely used plastic in the world, and for good reason. It's cheap to make, resistant to moisture, and doesn't break down easily, which is both a blessing and a curse, as we'll talk about later. But believe it or not, its origin story starts not in a high-tech lab, but in a kind of unexpected, accidental way. Our story begins back in 1898, in a lab in Germany. A chemist named Hans von Pechmann was messing around with diazomethane, which is, well, let's just say it's not something you want to be playing with casually. While heating it, he accidentally created this waxy white substance. He had no idea what he'd just made. His colleagues, Bamberger and Cherner, eventually examined the gooey stuff and realized it was made up of long chains of CH2 units. In modern terms, they had just stumbled upon polyethylene. But here's the catch. Back then, they didn't really know what to do with it. It sat on the shelf as more of a chemical curiosity than anything practical. Flash forward to the 1930s in the UK. The world was inching toward war, and scientific research was booming, especially in chemistry. At Imperial Chemical Industries, or ICI for short, two scientists, Eric Fawcett and Reginald Gibson, were experimenting with high-pressure chemical reactions. On March 27, 1933, they were attempting to react ethylene with benzaldehyde. The reaction didn't go as planned. When they opened the reaction vessel, they found a white, waxy solid again polyethylene had made its second surprise appearance. Unlike in 1898, though, this time people were ready to take it seriously. The ICI team realized they might have stumbled upon something useful. After several trials and some very explosive accidents, they refined the process into something more controllable. By 1939, they had a pilot plant up and running. Polyethylene got its big break during World War II. One of the main challenges at the time was keeping military radar equipment insulated without adding too much weight. That's where polyethylene came in. It's lightweight, water-resistant, and an excellent insulator. The British military began using it to coat radar cables on aircraft, helping to make planes lighter and more efficient. It was a quiet revolution. No one outside the labs or military really knew what was going on, but polyethylene had found its first real-world application, and once the war ended, it was time to take things commercial. After World War II, the world was ready to rebuild, and industries were looking for cheap, versatile materials. Polyethylene ticked all the boxes. By the 1950s, it had gone from secret military tech to the shelves of every supermarket. In 1953, another major leap happened. A German chemist named Carl Ziegler figured out a way to make polyethylene at lower pressures, which was a huge deal. It made the process safer, more efficient, and much cheaper. This version was called high-density polyethylene, or HDPE. 
Ziegler's breakthrough won him the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1963, and the plastics industry exploded from there. Polyethylene showed up in everything from shampoo bottles to Tupperware. The stuff was practically unstoppable. By this point, there wasn't just one kind of polyethylene. You had your low-density polyethylene, LDPE, which is super flexible and used for plastic bags and squeeze bottles. Then there's high-density polyethylene, HDPE, which is stronger and more rigid, perfect for things like detergent containers and milk jugs. Then came linear low-density polyethylene, LLDPE, a middle ground option that blends flexibility with strength. It's what trash bags and plastic wraps are often made from. In short, if it's plastic and it bends, there's a good chance it's some form of polyethylene. Today, we're producing hundreds of millions of tons of polyethylene every single year. It's used in packaging, construction, agriculture, you name it. It's literally part of the infrastructure of our modern world. But of course, there's a downside. Polyethylene is not biodegradable. It can last for hundreds of years in landfills, and that's assuming it even gets there. A lot of it ends up in oceans and rivers, breaking down into microplastics and entering the food chain. That's led to a growing movement toward biodegradable alternatives and recycling initiatives. Some newer versions of polyethylene are designed to be more eco-friendly, and researchers are experimenting with bio-based production methods using sugarcane or even algae. So while polyethylene has a complicated legacy, its future might be a little greener. When you look at the history of polyethylene, it's wild to think how it started, essentially as a lab accident, and grew into something that reshaped global manufacturing. It played a role in war, fueled post-war economic booms, and became so deeply integrated into our lives that we barely even notice it. But it's not just a story about plastic. It's a story about human ingenuity. We took a chemical fluke and turned it into something that could help us build, store, carry, and connect. The challenge now is making sure we use that same creativity to deal with its environmental impact. So next time you're carrying groceries in a plastic bag or squeezing out toothpaste, take a second to remember the long, weird journey that brought polyethylene into your life. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.